He just happened to be in New York at the fine establishment. Him being a giant collector of art, says, hey, there's this exhibition going on, just so happens to be downstairs of the hotel, Soho House Hotel, New York City. The exhibit is ran by an uncouth, aloof, little French man named Mr. Brainwash. Mr. Brainwash. There's a film called Exit Through the Gift Shop, which is basically a documentary on him. Just check it out. In his exhibit at this show in New York City, on the ground floor of the same building that houses the Soho House Hotel in the Meatpacking District, he has a gigantic gallery display of things and odd things and things and more stuff. And some of it is very whatever. Like, oh, that's whatever. I can do that. You did that. Majority of the art world looks at him and says, <laughs> And I've had many a conversation with my friends about this brain. I said, do not take my brain to put pain on me. My stash is making me. And I concur on some levels. There's one level that I can't concur on. And then there's extreme genius. Mr. Brainwash in his exhibit in New York, at the time he had a New York taxi cab in the exhibit. It's a regular New York taxi cab. He drove it right through the door, parked it. New York taxi cab. That's the piece. <laughs> <laughs> but the New York taxi cab was inside of what I can only describe as being a giant Hot Wheels of matching blocks, car box. Did you see it like Toys R Us or something like that? So it had like a big plastic thing in the front and like a board and they had like, it looked like a, it looked like a toy, but a toy box. And this is where it gets interesting. And that's the piece, New York taxi cab in this toy box. With the plastic you can see in it, it has all the writing, toy, new exciting fun, it has a child warning on it, et cetera, et cetera. The transformation that takes place is the same car that I, even me, took to get to this place now seems gigantic. It seems massive. But he didn't do anything. How does this thing become massive? How does, why does this thing look so massive? Why do I feel so small and insignificant in the face of this thing, in the face of this car, which is normal size? It's because of the package. Because of the packaging, he made this car for us into a toy for giants. So it makes you think, what is giants? And your thinking becomes bigger, because now you're thinking, well, I wonder what else we can make me. I wonder what else out there is just a toy for giants. I wonder how small I really am. And then you start to have a really deep conversation with yourself amidst the paintings of Madonna and Marilyn Monroe and Mickey Mouse with a gas mask on. Painted paint, splash food. But the conversation that you start to have with yourself is the, your relativeness to the world, your size in it how you relate to it, your impact with the world around you. How insignificant you really are. How significant you really are. Nestled and wrapped in your insignificantness. How much power do we really have? What is power? Who controls it? 
And by them, where are the giants? Because I've never seen them. So obviously, we're toys. But if we're toys, then who is playing with us? Come on. But since I saw no giants, am I playing myself? Who controls me? Who controls my actions? Because if that's a toy and I fit inside of it, then I'm an accessory to that toy. So how real am I? Do I keep it real? Or where's the threshold between fakeness and reality? And how come all it took for him and all it took to make this grand gesture was to take something that we use every day if you're in New York. Who use every day? And all he did was put it in some packaging. Packaging that we see every day, but on a scale that we're not really used to. But that we are used to for some reason. What is this? Well, and then before you know it, That. Silence. The mind calms down. Everything stops in the way. You really ask yourself, who am I? You even forgot who you even were. Because you were motivated to ask yourself the question, who am I? But yet you were so comfortable with who you were before you came into the place and feasted your eyes upon this object, an object that you saw every day. Transformation. And in finale, the little ones will probably get a kick out of this. Does anybody know the premier coveted transformation with niggas in the hood? So much so that it's probably one of the premier com conversions and transformations in society today. It's massive. My brother over here said going to jail. I think that's a transportation. <laughs> to a very transformative place. Now I'm talking about a conversion, a baptism of souls, a shahada of souls from one thing to another. The purest, most meaningful transformation that I think we'll speak on here tonight about. Nothing, huh? Give I mean, he's with us every day. It's one of the reasons that we're here. Gang, nah. Killing each other, nah. It's not that. Is that the transformation? Ask, ask, uh, ask uh, Jeremiah when he gets here. Is that the transformation? Hear me, Mike? Conversions. Nothing? It's not a conversion van. Those niggas in the hood do love conversion vans, though, but that's not it.
I do say the word nigga. I do. As a matter of fact, his name used to be James Baldwin. His name is Adia Coleman. He said that I'm not the nigga, baby. You are the nigga. When you call me a nigga, it's really what you think of me coming out. So that's something that lives inside of you already. Something that's in you, it's not in me. It's in you. So who's the nigga, baby? You might know what that conversion is? Nah. Alright, I'll give it to you. It is uh, conducive to everything that we talk about. Hadia Coleman, gun control, Barack Obama, State of the Union. Get these guns off the streets, do this, do that, bop, 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 firearms, that, 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 shoot, nigga, kill a nigga, kill a nigga quick, kill a nigga quicker, kill a, kill a nigga more effectively. The conversion that I'm speaking on is a conversion that my father introduced me to when I was a very young child. And that conversion is the conversion of a semi-automatic weapon which shoots once every time you pull the trigger to a fully automatic weapon which shoots repeatedly with one pull of the trigger. Right. It's the conversion from fully automatic, I'm sorry, from semi-automatic to fully automatic. It is one of the most coveted conversions in the world. The Mexican Mafia covets it. The Mexican cartels covet this conversion, more so than they do baptisms of the blood of Jesus. They covet it even more than that. All those guns that you see coming from Texas that they try to get into Mexico, these automatic weapons which only shoot once. There's a little man or guy who takes those guns, who breaks them down, cuts the spring, puts in a stronger spring, does a little modification to the receiver, different little levers and catches within the mechanisms of the firearm itself to transform it from a semi-automatic weapon that shoots only once when you pull the trigger to something that will empty the clip in less than 20 seconds to increase the rate of fire. It is religious. It is God, this conversion. It is the 